you hear me? Yeah, I got you. Oh, okay, I I I got feedback. You you got me on your headset? Yeah, I got the little uh parrot. Oh, okay, you got that blue parrot going on. Okay. But you can hear you can hear me loud and yeah. clear though, right? We we good? We good? Yeah, you coming in. Yeah, you coming in loud. Coming in you say the military five by five. <laughs> you say the military. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, where are you heading to right now? I'm here to uh, Lawnside to his drop, you, to his drop, drop the hook. Wait, wait, you you heading where now? Yeah. New Jersey? Yeah, Lawn Lawnside, New Jersey. Oh, Lawnside, New Jersey. Okay, okay, that's yeah. what's up. Yeah, and then I and then I'll shoot down to Aberdeen, Maryland, and pick up another load tomorrow and. Take that down to Greenfield, Indiana. All right, all right. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. Well, let me go ahead and uh, get this uh, intro done, man, so we can uh, go ahead and start this, yo. Yo, what's up, guys? Lockout okay. men right here in the building. I am off today. Can't y'all see the background? Y'all see the background right there? I am off today. But uh, today's a good day because I've been trying to get a hold of this man since we linked up. Where, where did we link up at? We we was where in Texas? Was, was it over in, over in Tennessee on the east uh, east Tennessee? Yeah, we was on yeah or in ten, okay in Tennessee. This is uh one of my uh come to find out he's one of my subscribers. I was outside doing the vlog right quick, and he came up to me. He was like, "Yo, ain't you lockout man?" I was like, yeah, that's me. He was like, oh, I'm one of your subscribers. I was like, cool, thank you. And then um, I came up to him. I asked him how long he was driving. And come to find out, he's a driver that I'm looking for. This this man right here been driving for 30 years. Let, let, me, let me get that Illuminati right quick. <laughs> 30 years of driving. Now, this man has seen and done it all. I mean, 30 years of driving, man. That's that's a lot of experience. That is a lot of experience. I want you guys to put your hands together for my man. Now, I asked him what his name is. Now, I'm, I'm feeling. Now, look. I, I, I don't know, bro. I, I don't know. I mean, I'm a grown, I'm a grown ass man. I'm I'm a grown, ass, I'm a grown ass man. About to call another man his name right quick. I want you guys to put your hands but together. You can call for, me. Oh well, let let me say your name. Let let me say the name first. I want you guys to put your hands together for Mister Chocolate Chip. <laughs> now look, look at here. Look here. What I, my first question to you is: Is how did you get the name? Is that a CB handle? That's a CB handle, and uh, actually, uh, I, I I say the ladies call me Chocolate Chip, and the guys just call me Chip. <laughs> That's what's but, up. But I I can't I, but I can't get rid of it because my wife got big got a big tattoo on her thigh of my CB handle. Uh, now see that's love right there. Oh. That is that. It, how long Hell have yeah. you? How long have you been married? Uh, be twenty one years in April. Twenty one years. Well, before before oh, me yeah. and before me and my wife uh, decided to separate, uh, it would have. Well, we separated at the twenty five year mark for us. Um, yeah, it would have been if we if we would have stayed together this year. Actually, this year would have been thirty years. It would have been thirty years for me, man. Wow. I know, right? I mean, you know, hey, look, I look, I, I'm I'm man enough. I I am man enough to admit that yeah, the 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 problems in my marriage back in the day, you know, I I you know. I, I I I was I was a part of it, you know what I'm saying. But but it, it is what it is, you know. And I'm glad to see that uh, still people to this day, you know, when they make it to the 20 year mark, because it is hard. It, it's hard 
to get to to the twenty year mark. You know what I'm saying? You know the love is lost. Yeah, the the, the the you know things happen. Uh, guys, girls get the you know get what's that? The twenty year itch. The midlife crisis <laughs> all of that you know what i'm saying so if you if you guys out there made it to at least 20 years y'all might as well just stay together and just finish it out you know because like right now well, see, go ahead yeah i'm gonna tell you uh i married a i married uh my my wife is from hoptown hopkinsville kentucky so i married a hoptown girl Mm-hmm. And you can't get rid of them women over there, man. They're like a pug on the finger. You can't flick them off. <laughs> you say you can't get rid of her, huh? Well, you know. No, you can't get rid of her, man. Luckily, luckily for me, she she uh, she gave me my my uh, one and only son, and um, much props to his mother because if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't have him. So thank you very much. Uh, uh, Sean's mother. I really do appreciate that. Yo, man, for the people that don't know who you are, man, let 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 them know who you are and, and uh, where you come from, bro. Well, actually, I'm uh, I was actually born in Birmingham, Alabama. So uh, my mother moved to Nashville back in the seventies, and then when I graduated from high school, I moved up. I moved there, and then I went off to the military for a little bit. And I married, you could say, my high school sweetheart, and then we came back. We got divorced, but we had a one child. So I have one, I have one child uh, mm. from my previous marriage. And then, uh, you know, I was like bouncing around and just struggling financially, and I was actually uh, a prison guard. Okay. okay. So I started driving trucks, and this guy was. My dad drove a truck for like 30 or 40 years. And he was, he said, well, you ought to be a truck driver. You want to make some money? I said, man, I ain't driving no truck. <laughs> you know, I said, I'm going to stay in the military, right? And so, you know, I was sitting there, and me and another guy was was talking. He had to classify it. And he said, Snyder is training National Guard members for free. And guess what? I was in the National Guard at that time. <laughs> <laughs> and you so I uh I uh huh? and you decided to drop with uh got you decided to get with Snyder International because of it? No, Snyder was training training for free and then I cuz I, I I you know I heard about truck truck driving school. Right. And they were just too expensive and some of the guys was having to work jobs and because they couldn't support their family still. You know, they had a family. Mm-hmm. And so they was trained for free, and uh, I took up the opportunity, man. And I, I had to look back since, and that was in, uh, that was 88, 89, 89. Okay, okay, okay. So, so with, so and, being that you, 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 you took advantage of the, of the, of the offer that, that Snyder was doing at the time, to uh jump in did did you did you already have your cdls before you got with snyder or you got with snyder and got your cdls through them i got it through them and all of this was yeah i got it through them and all of this was free i mean you didn't have to sign a contract or nothing like that the the deal the deal was you had to stay there a year what what they did was at that time they took out a thousand dollars out of your check, a little bit at a time, and then at the end of the year, if you were still there, you got it all back, no taxes, take it out. Okay, okay. So they fig- they they was going to get their money back either way. Either they was going to get their money back out of your out of your work, or they was going to get your money get their money back out of the pay, regardless. But they gave it all back right. to you after you. Did you stay the full year? I stayed the full year. Yeah, but actually, I stayed there about about four years. I think a little over four years. All right, so this is I ran dedicated on on a uh, automotive account with me and my one of my partners. All right, so this is back in the eighties, man. So talk to me. What was what was life as a truck driver back in the eighties? Uh, it was a lot. You know what? It, you know what? Every year. 
that I've been out here, I always hear, you always hear guys on the CB say, man, it's, it's getting bad every year. But even back then, they saying, man, it's getting bad every year. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, it's a lot better. It was a lot better back then than it is now. I, I could imagine. So talk um, to me. Tell 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 the difference the the way it was back then versus now. Well, for one thing, you didn't have as many scale houses back then, especially back in the deregulation. Because I used to go on the road with my dad when I was a you know I was a little you know little little squirt you know little tight and you, yeah and 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 it was it wasn't a lot of it wasn't a lot of scale houses back then and the ones that were that was there most of the time it wasn't open or DOT was kind of very nonchalant. And and then by the time I started driving, man, it was they were starting to, you know, they were starting to um, do a little bit more on inspections and stuff like that. But it's nothing like it is, nothing like it is now. Of course, back then, you know, it was ten hours of driving and you take your break. Um, wasn't no stupid thirty minute breaks and all that kind of stuff. And I was running, I was running all over, man. I was staying out two weeks at a time. And you know, the long, you know, as long as I've been driving, I've never stayed out three weeks with any company. I've been the only time I was out three weeks is when I was with my road train, and that was it. You know, it's like I was out, I was home every weekend, or I was out every two weeks. All right, so back in the back in the eighties, man, we know the we we know the. Uh the situations what was what was some of the situations that you had occurred back in the 80s man like did like you had to know how to read a map <laughs> 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 yes you, sir. you had to know how to read a map man because you didn't have there was no cell phone so if you got lost you know it wasn't like you're gonna pull over and call somebody or call somebody while you drive okay it was no cell phones um. Uh, uh, and, and I was making like twenty cents a mile. Okay, so that's what ho- I was making back then. Ho- when I first started ho- 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 hold up, before we get into the to to the cents, hold up. We we're gonna get to we we're gonna get to the we're gonna get to that in a minute. What I want to know is, of course, what you said that you had to learn how to read a map. What happened in your experience when you got lost, like? Or, or what happened uh, if you got lost, and how was it that you was able to make your way out of it? Well, back then, uh, you just got you know got a prepaid card, or you know you use your you know you go to a pay phone, and you'll call the customer. In, in some cases, the company would provide direction. You know. Uh, but other than that, man, when you stop somewhere, you you got your load and you heading on out, and you stopping at a truck stop, then you you can go in a, any just about any truck stop, and and guys in there on the phone either getting directions or they they're calling their their wives, husbands, kids, whoever you know. So now you you now you, there you was don't really you don't really miss. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, now there was. There must have been a huge hell of a lot of pay phones back in the day. They there were, there were, there were a lot. You, you, you had pay phones at, like I said, truck stops. You had them at rest areas. Uh, there were a lot of pay phones back then. I, so, is it true what I've been saying all this time that you guys needed like a like a bucket of quarters? Did did you have that? Please say yes, cause I have been saying that for for the yep, last I, five I, years. I always kept I always kept change. Yeah, I always kept change until until uh, I started buying prepaid cards, and then I started using that. All right, all right. So all right, so of course, uh, of course, you needed to you needed to know how to to read a map back in the day back 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 in the days of trucking because now we got gps's and you really don't even need to know how to read a map now but still it it does pay to at least learn it but the map 
back in the day how 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 was how was it for you in your travels using the atlas back in the day well for me i would uh i would do my trip planning and i just write down my route and i always had my little i was always bought laminated maps so i would have my laminated map and i would just keep it there just just on standby sometimes i use a paper the paper uh atlas and i would fold the page up so if i'm if i'm in another state and then I was like, well, I need to kind of like, kind of know, want to know where I am at this moment, you know. Especially if you had not seen the town, you're on the back row, you want to know where you are. So I would, I would fold the pages and then if I kind of need to put it out, look at it real quick, put it back down, then I'm good. But I didn't, I didn't really have, I didn't really have a big problem getting around. You know, I, it was a couple of times I missed my, I missed my turn and I was in Texas, man. I was on the back row. And I had to turn around, and I was like, I didn't see any place to turn around, so I ended up on this guy's farm. <laughs> wow. It was like a very big farm. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, so I turned around, man. It was like a big, big, just a big empty lot, you know. Oh, okay. It, you know, just good thing it was, good thing it had been raining if I would have got stuck. Because you're going to, you're going to, you're going to screw up while you in your process of learning how to drive and it's you know it's so much easier now with with google maps and google earth and your gps and man you 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 know it's a lot easier driving driving a truck now as far as getting around you got your cell phones you know you call the customer you know because back then if there was construction i mean if other than cb radio you wouldn't know about a backup or anything, you know, unless uh, guys told you on the radio. So now, have, you know, your Google Map, it, it'll, t- have, it'll tell you if the road is closed or it's an accident. Having a CB now, having a CB back then was key. Yeah, because some of these, some of the, some of the, like, even back for me when I was a young driver, even some of those old, old road dogs, man, these guys knew every little back, back road you can think of. So, so it was all. It was somebody always knew. If you got on the radio, man, somebody seemed like I would say at least eighty percent of the time knew how to get somewhere if you was in that area. So how was CB? You know? how, how was CB talk back then? Well, because CB, I I got a CB, but the CB talk now is just discombobulated. Only time to be honest with you, the only time I turn my CB on is like when I get into a into a traffic situation. Other than that, I leave it off, man, because it's so much it's so much rhetoric, so much garbage, so much this and that. Well, how how was CB talk amongst the amongst the drivers back then? It it hadn't changed. It's 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 the same thing. They don't talk as much now because they got. You know, you got all kinds of entertainment in your truck going down the road. You know, you know, you got your Exxon radio, and and, and, and matter of fact, I, it was I was somewhere a couple of weeks ago, and I remember some guy got on the radio and said, "Man, there's no radio traffic today." I mean, people are just kind of preoccupied with their phones. You know, a lot of people be screwing around with their phones while they're driving, so it was no, like like now it's only no need to talk on the radio. You know, every now and then guys would be talking on the radio. Now, I, I wasn't a big CB talker myself. You know, I didn't, I didn't, I, I, I was never into radios, man. I was like you. The only time I really had my radio on is to listen to if there's an accident ahead or a backup right, or right, something right. like that. Other, other than that, other than that, I didn't talk, I didn't talk on the radio unless I was specifically running with somebody. Okay. Okay. All right. So let's uh let's let's continue on with the eighties, man. So what was what was life like for a driver up under running on paper logs, man? Man, guys would run two or three log books. I I never I never ran two log books ever. Because I, I, I feel like I would screw it up. I heard I, I heard of drivers running two, three, four law books. How was that possible back then? 
Because, you know... Yeah, they'll just... They'll run their... Like, they'll out, and then they'll just grab the other one, man, like they was already at the place where they just started, even though they just ended there. And they'll just, they just keep moving. The guys will run from East Coast all the way to West Coast. Get a pack of cigarettes, you know, coffee, and, and, and that's how they did it back in the day. Popping, popping little caffeine pills and stuff. You know, it was some, it was some true outlaws back in the day, even back before I started driving. My dad used to go down the road, believe it or not. And this ain't don't lie. <laughs> he would go down the road with a with a cooler full of Budweiser, just popping beers, driving the truck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> back, back you then, know, back, back in the outlaw days. Back then, back then, that's you know, can of beer on the on on the on the passenger side. And just crack it open whenever you need it, driving down the street without even having to worry about D -D I mean DWIs or nothing like that. Back then, I, I, I can imagine back then drivers was like like drunk. <laughs> but, yeah, for, well, for him, you know, beer, beer didn't really get him really intoxicated. I guess he just liked that taste and that fizz. Mm -hmm. uh, but... But if he if he smelled a bottle if he if he took the bottle cap off of a bottle again and sniffed it he would be tore up. It didn't even drink a sip. But that that beer, he could drink that beer, man, and he'll just sit there and just pee. Wow. I, yeah. I ain't never seen nothing like it. Outlaw trucking back in the eighties, man. So you you said that so you say you yourself never ran more than you you never ran two law books. So you just so you was so you're one of the honest drivers that was just, you know, doing it quote unquote legal. Oh, I wasn't honest. I won't say I I won't say I was honest. I, I just kinda exaggerated the one that I had. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know? Okay, okay. You know? Yeah, I was kind of exaggerate. I kind of exaggerated the one I had, but I never ran two laws. But now I knew. Now this this company that I'm about to tell you actually shut their doors what, a couple of weeks ago, three weeks ago, and that was how you remember uh, Howard Bear. Yeah, they was on CD uh, CD CD Life. Yeah, and that was news. Uh, I drove with those cats back in the early days, and uh, there there were guys. And this is the killer part, man. The dispatchers knew about it. You know, everybody knew how these drivers would run. See, back then they was they was pulling all that Kroger stuff, right? Right. That's back when Kroger's was in Nashville, and they would they would pull out of their milk and tea and stuff like that. Uh, maybe some paper towels, all that paper, but and so they would they would. Uh, they would do a load, and the load paid so much money. Like, and this one guy, man, he was down there, in the, and I remember this, too. He was sitting down there in the break room. He had three law books, and I remember him specifically telling me he had just came in from his 10-hour run, and he was getting ready to go to a Little Rock. He said, man, that Little Rock run paid $238. I, I, I just remember this like it was yesterday. He said that run paid two hundred thirty eight dollars. That man, I said I'm going home. I said I'm not that that hungry for money like that. I got to run hot like that, you know. Right. And so I took a load up to I took a load up to Detroit, and I was coming back. He already he already took a load to Little Rock and came back, and then turned around. He was heading north. And back then, uh, there was a, a scale house in Elizabethtown, Kentucky. You know, the, the southbound is still there, but, the, you know, they closed the, the northbound side for some reason. Okay. But it was open back then. So when I was coming south, man, I looked over there in the northbound scale, and I seen his truck. I knew I knew, I knew, knew his truck. And they had, DOT got a hold of him and shut him down. Wow. So the company, the company fired him. What? Because he got busted. Oh, okay. Yeah. But if he had, if, he, if they, he hadn't, they, got, see, they knew what he was doing. But if he, of course, I was about to say that if he hadn't got busted, then the company would have still been like, oh yeah, okay, we'll turn the other cheek. But when you get busted, then we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to fire you. Ain't that's, ain't that about nothing? Yep. Yep. That's what they did to him. So, 
I know that the ELD laws are are a pain in the butt, you know, because I, I, you know, but I can say one thing. Uh, for one thing, ELD laws probably saved my life. You know, electronic laws. Okay. It probably saved my life, man, because I used to be, I used, you know, I used to run, you know, I, I, you know, back in the day, man, I used to run. Like I said, I exaggerated the hell out of one log book. <laughs> All right. And I used to run, and I would fix my, uh, you know, fix it up. And um, but I'm glad, I'm glad that you know we do have electronic log books, even though they are a pain in the butt, because it keeps the driver honest and it keeps the company from pushing the driver, which is a safety issue. Now there is some companies out there that still, even even on even on e laws, to be honest with you, they still try to push. They still trying to get that blood from a lemon when they when they be pushing their drivers. Well, you you still got about you only you got two hours left. Go ahead and run. Go ahead and run. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I gotta find somewhere to shut down. Like I gotta at least take at least one of those hours to find somewhere to shut down. I'm not gonna drive all the way out and then had to end up parking on the highway for 10 hours. I'm not going to do that. And I don't even think you can do that these days, even though I still see a lot of drivers pull off on the side of the off ramps and stuff like that. But man, woo, man, outlaw trucking. Yeah, I would, uh, I, yeah. Outlaw trucking in the eighties, man. All right. So what, what, what was the equipment? What was the equipment like? Cause you know now we got we we ah. got the new bandit system we got we got air rides we got uh you know we got the bounce in the in the in the uh in the uh cab seat what was it like for you guys back in the day without without all that comfort? Okay, so my first truck was. I told you earlier it was a cab over. Mm -hmm. I still remember that truck number, it was ninety six seventy. It was a a short, a very short cab over. It didn't you couldn't stand up in the truck. It had a doghouse in the middle. Doghouse is is it's that that little carpet, you know, the little portion that goes from one end from the driver's seat to the passenger seat. It's just kind of you know you can you can you can take that whole cab and 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 move it forward if you had to get underneath it. And uh, but you had to crawl across across it, so you had I had to take my clothes on and off while I'm laying down in the bed. I'm, <laughs> I'm assuming because now being that you, and, you you said a cab over, so a cab over is these trucks that was actually over the engine, right? Right, right. It's all flat across the front. Flat across the front, and it's all and, flat and the whole. The and when you need to get to the engine, the whole cab flips over right yeah they can crank it they can crank it they can crank it up and just move that whole cab jack it up and get underneath there now see what they have to do now being that being that that bunk area that that bunk area has ha, had to be mean you say you had to take off your clothes to get in and out of there because why why was that why why is that why you had to do that uh you had to yeah, while you back behind the curtains, you, you know, you get behind your curtains and close them. And, and so when you back there, you are already in your bunk. You're already in the bed. So you have to, you know, take all your clothes off and put your clothes on while you're back there in your bunk. There, there was no way of of standing up or anything. You couldn't even get on your knees and put anything on. It's just how, that's how it was. And it had leaf springs suspension there was no air ride or nothing man so you ran over a shadow you 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 felt everything i always tell people i had bricks for suspension it was that <laughs> was no air ride or nothing it was that bad and i was one of the fortunate ones because i had yeah because I, I was one of the fortunate ones i had power steering some of the guys didn't have power steering Ooh, how was <laughs> that and you got it and, and you had to and you had to make it was manual transmission too, so no power steering and manual yep. transmission. I, how did that make for no, for travel? No. Uh, you know, it, it's like you it it is it's it's, it's kind of weird because you when you when you come into that trucking back in the day, you're just used 
to you, you. It's like what you have is how you adapt to it because it's all new to you. You see what I'm saying? Right. Um, if you like, if you take the new guys coming into trucking today, they getting in. They can potentially get into a brand new room. But it's got all the cameras looking at you, and it's got all this other equipment, safety equipment. And but you know, sometimes the older guys like me, you know, they don't like stuff like that. You know, right. they don't they don't like all the camera stuff. But but to a new driver coming into the system, then this is all new and fresh to me, just like it was to you know, like back in the day. You know, when I first came in. And, and I was driving 55 miles an hour back then. There was no, you know, wasn't no no fast truck. Speed, and, spe- you know, speed some, limits. Some of speed, the it, speed limits yeah. back then was 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 only touching 65, right? Or 55 at the most, right? Uh in some places, you know, it was it was 65, 70. It was just 55 for us. You know, with the exception of California, you know, that's, that's that had never changed. It's still 55 yeah, it's right 55 there. it's 55, period. And that's why I hate going out to California. Yeah. Yeah, I hate it, man. I, I was out there probably about a month ago. It's still 55. <laughs> yeah, not, not, a, nope. not a fan. Yeah, yeah. Not a fan. <laughs> Not a fan of uh, yeah, man. California. They can, they can. Not a fan. Not a fan of California. They can keep it. Not a fan of California, and definitely not a fan of the Northeast. Which is my next question: What? How was it like driving in the Northeast back in the eighties? Um, I remember. I remember my first trip. Trip was to Pennsylvania by myself. I was solo then. It cut me a loose. Still in the cab over. I've been with my trainer, and I still in the cab over, man. I'm still in my cab over, and uh, I head up to to Whips Bear, Pennsylvania, and then from there they sent me over to Jersey City, New Jersey. And before I got to Jersey City, I ran into another Snyder driver who had been there before me, and he was started laughing. He said, "Man, they're gonna send you over to New York City, you know, because you know you." You always hear about these horror stories for driving trucks in New York City. And so I was kind of like nervous and kind of like, okay, somebody somebody screw with me is going to be me or them. That was just my attitude, you know. And so I had to go over to Jersey City, New Jersey, and, and then from there they sent me over to Harlem to pick up another trailer. And, of course, I'm looking at the map. I'm nervous as hell. I'm worried about low overpasses and all this, that kind of stuff. And so I get over there, and I, I'm i looking for this. I'm looking forward to pick up this empty trailer, you know. And people over in New York City, man, they tore the bill. They tore the signs down, street signs down. So I didn't know where I was turning. Nobody can really give me no really good directions and so I went into a grocery store. I called Snyder and I'm kinda upset and and hold, uh hold on right hold, hold on right quick. Hold on. Sorry about that. I had uh had my delivery come. I had my delivery come so all right I'm back. I'm back. All right what you was okay. saying go ahead continue what you were saying. Well I I, I called I called Snyder and told him I, I said I don't know what this place is and and I was I was just upset I said man I'm gonna quit and this that they said oh no don't do that we'll get you out of there and uh, well I ended up finding this place it was you know it, it wasn't too far from where I was so I so I talked to a uh, I talked to a New York City truck driver and he told me how to get down to Brooklyn without knocking the top of your truck off. <laughs> and uh, so I got down there and I find this building. It looked like an abandoned building, man. The glass all knocked out. I said, This is an abandoned building, you know, but I was picking up some baby seats. And so I had to back, I had to blindside in, into the building. Uh-huh. And people were driving up on the sidewalk around me in a car. <laughs> they they wasn't they but wasn't showing you they, they wasn't showing you no kind of love there, huh? 
Oh no, man! You know New York City, man. It was, it was. You know what? That was the first and last time I ever been to New York City. <laughs> so you say so I had been back to New York City. I, I, I would turn down a loan. I would not go to New York City. I don't care if it paid me two or three hundred dollars extra. So you say you don't. So you say you don't want to mess with. New, you say you won't mess with New York City at all. Me, I, I won't mess with New York. Period. Nope. I, I don't mess with New York, the boroughs, the Bronx, none of that. I, I, I don't mess with none of that. I, I, none of the boroughs and none of the boroughs that whatsoever. You know, um, you know, now other places. You know, I've been to all the other states. You know, um, I'm not crazy about New Jersey. I'm not. Philly, uh, Pittsburgh, I absolutely hate Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh was not designed for a tractor trailer. <laughs> you know? And you know what? And you, and you want to know any, something? It, you you want to know something about PA? It's like PA feels like it is the longest fucking state. It's like like I can get yep. I, I can get to PA. I can get to PA from Ohio for like in about an hour, hour and a half. Getting through PA. It's like e fucking eternity, dude. From PA up to what? What is it? Jersey or New York? No, Jersey. Yeah. Yeah. From from P uh, going through PA to Jersey, it's like e fucking eternity because you got to go through all of these fucking back roads. You got to hit the hills. You got to hit. It, it ain't no mountains up there, but you got to hit those grades going up and down grades. And especially if you got like 42,000 pounds on the, on, on, the, on the back of the, I mean, back of the, tr I mean, on the back, it, it just makes the driving, right. this, this makes the driving so freaking painful, but I can't say this about PA. It does have some nice sights though. That's about the only good thing about PA. If you hadn't, if you hadn't drove through PA or you haven't been through PA, it does have some nice scenery. Other than that, it's 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 fucked. It's a fucked up drive, <laughs> man. Back in yeah, it was 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 crazy. Uh, oh, go yeah. ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. What's crazy? What? Yeah, what's crazy is that for a large state, when you get out there. Off the exit, everything content. Everything is just small. It, it just you know you know town streets you know streets are small. West Virginia is the same way, just wide open interstate. But once you get out, man, everything content now. You know, I'm just I don't I don't I don't, I don't like East Coast. I, I mean, be honest with you, I've seen all these places. I've been there a hundred, two hundred thousand times and. You know, I say the West Coast is probably the best, the most beautiful places. As far you as know, as uh, far as sceneries go, Salt Lake City, you, yeah, so yeah, as far as the scenery and stuff, man, it's just beautiful. Anybody that anybody get an opportunity to you know get with a company, they go out west, man. It's just the only bad thing is when you get to Wyoming, things can go south. You know, it could be it could be spring, summertime, early summer. And you can be wearing shorts and flip flops, and then you get in Wyoming. You got you got you got to put on some. You got to put on. You got to put on some long johns and some corduroys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got you either got a blizzard or you got uh, you got uh, sixty mile an hour winds and all that kind of stuff. They got dense fog. They will shut the road down for that too. Have you? Have you? Know. you did you? Have you had to uh, chain up back in the day? I chained up. Let me tell you. When I was with Snyder, they sent me to Everett, Washington. So I'm running across 90. Okay. And I had to I had to chain up. Well, I didn't have chains. They gave us cables. So I had to put the cables on. Cables? And uh, just to get... Yeah, it's low, low cable. Cables? They don't use them anymore, but that's what that's what Snyder gave us. It was probably cheap when they when they gave it to us, but that's what that's what they all gave us. And uh, so I I pull up because the lights are flashing. You know, there was a there was a state trooper right there, and, and so everybody pulls over except for one 
for one company. Who was that company? And I'm not picking on him, but it was the U.S. Express. He just kept going. And so everybody just kind of looked. <laughs> and so after I got my after I got my cables on and I saw it, you know, I took off. I got up, went up the mountain. Well, who's stuck on the side of the road? U.S. You know, Express. Yep, he's stuck. He probably would have stayed up there at the spring time until all this thawed out, but. That was that was, and then and then once I got to uh, Everett, Washington, that the thickest, the thickest fog I ever seen in my life, right? Okay, so it was the fog was so thick. I knew I was getting close to this place, but I I couldn't see the building. I just seen some lights, you know, shining. So I walked up and I looked at the at the street sign. I said, okay, well. This has got to be the, the current right here. So, and I end up finding the building. But then I left there. Okay. This, this is all in the same week. I left there. They sent me down to LA. What do I, what do I see coming down going south? Oh, I hit my very first and only sandstorm. Now, that made my butt cheeks tighten up right there. <laughs> 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 oh, but I could have cracked some wall on that one. <laughs> because that 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 sand blew across my windshield and I couldn't see anything. And then when it was all said and done, on on the northbound side of what is that five? I think it was five or the one oh one five. It was like over two hundred car and truck piled up on that northbound side. People just started running to each other. Nothing on the southbound side. So that was that was my little my little week excursion, man, on on, on that. That was actually two trips, but it all happened in the same week. That's what's up. All right. Hey. Snowstorm, ice storm. Yeah, oh, okay. I, I, no, I was holding up for you. I, I, I was holding up for you, man. I, I'm letting you have it. This, I'm just sitting here enjoying the, uh, the, the, the conversation. So I'm, I'm letting you have it. <laughs> um, check, yeah, man, I, check this out. <laughs> check this out, though. Back then, back in the '80s, how, how was it for? How was it for? Um, for drivers getting to you know drivers and truck stops back then how how was how was the experience back then for drivers and truck stops that's the one that was the one part that that has a change now back then you had uh, the 76 truck stop was was one of the big main truck stops everybody would go to. Uh, it was sort of like the Petro. Mm -hmm. uh, TA had been around forever, but you didn't have any of the pilots and the loves and all that stuff. And then you had the, you, you know, you had your little mom and pop truck stop. But drivers still tend to go to all the big truck stops. Now they, now it's it's so many truck stops. Well, we, we, we I still say there's not enough. Maybe there's just not enough. There's not enough truck stops in the areas that you need to go to. There's a lot of truck stops, but not in the areas that you need to go to. At least, but it was at least still, not, it was still all the same. At thing. least not now, not not now. It's not that right. many that not that many truck stops, especially up in the Northeast. It's it's definitely not enough truck stops in the Northeast. I I can account for oh, that. Oh no, man! And it and, and it was really, it, it was even less back back then. <laughs> so, because I went I went up to Rhode Island and and picked up uh I picked up at Sam tonight, picked up a load of suitcases and took it down to to Brownsville, Texas, down to Walmart. That was that was probably my best my best trip, best best paying trip back then as a rookie driver. All right. So, so, how was how about the pay? What was the pay like back then? Well, when I when they first cut when they first cut us cut cut us loose as a solo driver, 
they paid us four hundred dollars a week salary, which wasn't bad back then. I think they kept you on it for about, I think, no more than a month. I think, and then after that, it was twenty cents a mile. Was, was you getting paid? I didn't want to get off the salary. Wait, was you getting paid mileage pay and salary pay? No, no, it was no, it was uh, just salary pay for your first, I think, first four weeks. Oh, okay. And, you know, and that's and that's and that's just to get you comfortable with what you're doing and and all of that. And then after that, they put you. Then it, it went to twenty cents a mile. So that's what I was making. So, how was you? <laughs> now you know we get we we get paid you know a little bit more, uh, and we get our checks to depo- uh, electronic de- uh, electronic deposit. How did you guys get paid over the road back then? I've I've always had electronic. I've always had electronic deposit. I always had a checking account ever since I was a teenager. So, you know, you just turn, you just void your check and turn it in, and they just, they just send, it, you know, electronically through your bank. Now, some some guys didn't trust that, and they just got their stuff mailed to them. Yeah, but even if they, which I didn't, I never did do that because because yeah, because your shit get lost. Back then, back then, you know, debit cards wasn't as rampant as it is now. I mean, you know, ATMs back right. in the eighties was just coming into was just coming into the fold. So, uh, how would they? What they they was just you know the same thing that trust stops do now. They was able to get a get an advance uh, from their company. Yeah, you can still get the advances on your card. Yeah, you can still get advances. That's 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 still the same. Okay. Okay. Man, back in the eighties, and a lot, of, and a lot of guys did. Man, back in the eighties, see, even back then, even even back then, lockout man, I I would I would cook. See, I cook on I, I cook on the road now. Okay. Uh, and even back then, I cook. You know, I I, I bought me a cooler, and uh, I would buy the little little frozen meals, and and I bought a cooking pot. And they still sell these cooking pots. At the truck stop. But wait, wait, wait! Did you uh, you you had in, you around. you had inverters back then? No, there wasn't no inverters. They it was just like your your regular old standard uh, igloo cooler. Okay. And and uh, just plug it into the cigarette light. Oh, okay, and then, oh, the all the little crock pot, all the little crock pot. You could you could use the cigarette lighter and cook. Okay, I see what you're saying. Okay. Okay, I'm over here. Yeah, I'm yeah. over here like you. You saying you cooking on the truck, and I'm like, wait, they had inverters back then. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. I man, what you know? I just had a brain fart. So yeah, I've seen these uh these crock parts. <laughs> uh, they, as a matter of fact, love still sell one of them called the the lunch box cooker or some shit like that that you could put. You know, that thing ain't worth nothing, man. <laughs> Oh, the way the crock pot. Oh, yeah, yeah. I know one of them was a uh, little like a lid. One of them look. Now nah, I bought the little lunch box thing, uh-huh. and it's it's not good for anything, man. I mean, put a sandwich in there, and heat it up, maybe, <laughs> but it wasn't good, man. But that, but that cooking pot and that and that uh, skillet. I bought the. I bought. I've had the skillet, but that pot. Soon as you put, soon as you plug it up, it get hot instantaneously, man. And I would buy. Uh, you know, obviously it was it was it was too small for a steak, so I would take my steak and I would cut it up, and I would just, you know, put a little cooking spray in there, and that's how I cook my steak. I, hamburgers the same way. Uh, hell, even one time I cook, I boiled some grits in that thing, man. I I boiled some grits and cooked the egg in that in that skillet. I was I was very innovative. Okay. Okay. Very innovative. What about? But that's how that's how I survive on cooking. How was it back then? They they considered trucking as a man's as a man's man type of deal, as a man's man job. Uh, being that you was married, how did that affect your family when when you left? 
Um, I was uh, I was divorced from my first wife by the time I started driving. Okay. And so when I married my my wife, my second wife, what I'm with now, I was running. I was running for, I think Robert or Cisco, and I was home every day, and I left Robert or Cisco and I went to Shoney back before Shoney closed down, and so we so it it never did bother her driving the truck, which is which I'm very thankful for because. I know a lot of people get into trucking now, especially some of the younger younger guys mm-hmm. and the the wife and stuff. They got kids, and some of them not as keen, especially with their husbands being gone for two or three weeks at a time. You know that that can be a little rough on a young driver. Okay. okay. So I, I I thank God I never had I never had an issue with that. In your 30 years of travel, man, what was the best thing about trucking? For me, I'm, I was the only child, so I didn't like, I liked the freedom of, they gave they gave me my load, they tell me where to pick up, they tell me where to deliver it, and they didn't me. bother me. And that part, I appreciate the most. Besides, besides the money, because if it wasn't for truck driving, I wouldn't be able to afford, uh, afford my home, and you know, I've, I've bought my wife vehicles, you know, she, she, she had three brand new vehicles. I just bought my, I just bought me a new vehicle here about, I don't know, about three, about three months ago. But my vehicle, I had kept, I had kept my, I had a Nissan Maxima that I bought brand new. I used to have a sports car. I had a I had a Mitsubishi uh, 3000 GT, and I you know it water uh, had a water pump running out, and I took it to a mechanic that was like close to where I parked my truck. He couldn't fix nothing past the 1975, right? <laughs> and so they just kind of screwed my car up, man. And so my wife said, "Well, you need to go and get rid of it." So I bought I bought me a vehicle. But I kept that thing about 14, 15 years man, before I bought the one I got now. So I got me a 2020 now. So okay, okay. What was what was in a keep in a in a, in a cheap car? What what was the worst? What was some of the worst things that uh that you've seen in trucking in your thirty years of travel? The worst, uh, what, what what I have seen in trucking. Yes. What was what was the worst? Uh. I would say the courtesy out here. The courtesy, the courtesy, I, you don't see it as much. You see it in spurts. Like driving, helping drivers, you know, if, if drivers trying to back into a spot, you know, somebody to get out and help them sometimes. Or you got guys on the radio just cursing. And I, and I understand, you know, we all want to, want to get parked we've been driving all day but i think a lot of drivers seem to have forgotten that you know you was brand new out here too and you're trying to bag into a spot and man some of these truck stops man they're 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 really tight some of them are pretty tight and the whole the whole thing with bagging up to a spot is you got to set up you set up probably you'll be able to get into any damn spot, any truck stop. But if you're coming in, you you looking around, you're trying to see where you're parked. You you're not in the right position. You know, you tell somebody the front end off the truck. You know, um, the courtesy thing that's because that's one of the reasons why I don't even listen to the radio. Everybody get on there acting a nut. You know, you get two two drivers on there. Somebody can say, hey, what is the Best way to get from exit one to exit two. That'll cause an argument right there. 
So you say no. <laughs> so you say no kind of courtesy for for back in the day. The brother, I, I, I think that's not, the brotherhood is, yeah. is is the brotherhood is just not there no more, like it used to be. It, and it's not. It, it's not uh, because because we we are occupied. We in our little cocoon with our with our cell phones. That that the cell phone was the game changer. See. See, we, back back then, you know, you got you got a long trip. You get on the radio, man. You just saw a jaw jacket. Mm -hmm. Just to just to kill time. You know, sometimes guys just get on the radio and get some crap started just just for entertainment value. Oh, okay. Now, man, you got XM Radio and you got, you got all your music and you got podcasts you know, like, you got like what I your got phone, now. Man. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So. But you go down, man, you go down the interstate, and for a long time, you may not hear anything on the radio. Everybody's preoccupied with inside their cab now. So, so out of, out of the thir out of the thirty years now, since you told me what was the worst and what was the what was the best and what was the worst, how satisfied or dissatisfied would you uh, with uh, the trucking industry as a career today? Well, the, the part, the, the things that I hate the most is all of these, all these new laws. You know, every time they turn around, there's a there's a new law. They mandate truck drivers got to do this, they got to do that. You can't do this, you can't do that, and it it's not making the road, it's not making the road safer. You know, it's just more restrictions on the driver. Why the four wheelers, you know, they, they get away with murder because unless you just directly see them do something, you know, and get caught, I mean, nothing happens to them. So I guess they think if they can make it harder on us, you know, to satisfy all these groups, you know, they got a lot of groups out there that don't like, like trucking companies. Maybe they had a loved one get killed, unfortunately, by a truck driver, but, uh, that's that's the part of trucking that I actually I hate the most. You know I don't like that, and and that's why a lot of some a lot of guys, some of them just get out. They just get out of trucking. How, it just it's too many it's too many laws restrictions. How do you feel about these new jacks coming into the game, and do you feel that they're being trained properly? Uh, not from what I see. Not from what I not from what I see. Um, uh, you you'll get to a truck stop, man. And they just they just struggling. And uh, I try to help out. You know, I try to help out when I can, because like I said, I always knew I knew how it was back when I was coming up in this business. And if everybody would do that, you know, if everybody like you know help help, you know, you see a guy trying to pull his trying to slide his his trailer his fifth wheel. Go there and help them out. You know, you just guys, you're just guys, guys that sit behind the driver's seat and say, look at that dumbass over there. He can't even slide his wheel. You know, go in there and help the man out. But I tell you who get all the attention. You get a, you get a female truck driver, especially a good looking one. You'll have five or six guys out there trying to help her back into a spot. How was it, how was it for females back in the day? Have have you have you uh have you have you worked at a company that that had some female drivers there? Oh yeah. Uh I say uh the main some of your main carriers like Schneider, um see Schneider, not not too many of them at J B Hunt, but a lot of I've seen a lot of female drivers at Schneider. And even in trucking, period, uh, you'll, you'll see a lot of female drivers now. More so now than you ever have. Because people are kind of, kind of realizing that, you know, they're, they're, you know, they're dipping their hands in trucking and, you know, they want to travel, see the country and all of that. You know, I guess they figure out at some point whether or not they want to stay in it. But, you know, I, I've, I've talked to and not, I, I know, uh, you know, a lot of female drivers. Handle truck pretty damn good too. 
some of them are hot. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. All right. Well, man, chocolate chip, man. What, what, what is your, what is your name, though? <laughs> your name's Chip. I'm, I'm. It, your your name Roger. is Chip, right? Yeah, it's uh, Roderick Anderson. Uh, that's far away from Chip, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's that's far away from. Yeah, it's right again. That's far away from Chip. Because I, because I, I, I always say because I, I used to eat chocolate chip cookies a lot, so that's why I, I went by. Uh, so you go down the road, man, just eat, eat chocolate chip. Let cookies. me ask you this right quick. Be- so that's kind of where that. Where that let came me ask from. you this right quick before we get on up out of here, man. How? You know, nowadays, well, now, you know, drivers have to have, you know, DOT physicals because of the regulations and all like that. How was it back then as far as as far as getting the physical? Was it was it was it oh, it's on the tip of my tongue, but I can't I can't say how I want to say it. But it was the same. Oh, it was the same. So you had to, it was so you same. had to get the DOT card back then as well. Yep, and and I can tell you one thing that you know back when the guys had commercial when they had uh, chauffeur's license, guys had chauffeur license back then. Okay. And so when they said that drivers gonna gonna be gonna mandate that they have C CDLs, well, a lot of the a lot of the old school drivers, um, a lot of the old school drivers couldn't read and write. See, okay, and and I and I kid you not, it was back in. I think they started it with back in the early nineties. I think that then when they came out with the get to get CDL, they was actually selling uh, CDL CDL tests, not tests, but manuals and stuff, right. and that stuff was on uh, CD ROMs and stuff. Right. And they was selling that back. I, I remember seeing it back in the truck stop back in the day. And some of the guys just got out of trucking because. You know they they couldn't read they couldn't read that well, but they still knew they knew how to get around. You know they knew the road like the back of their hand. Wow! And um, so you know, wow! I uh, it it didn't affect me. You know, I just I came in, I was already good to go. But man, that's those old school guys, man. I tell you, they knew every damn cafe. Every restaurant, every cheap restaurant from one end of the country to the next. Wow. <laughs> well, chocolate. When they, when they well, chocolate to chip, you. man. It's, I, I, I appreciate the, I, I appreciate the stroll down memory lane, man. This is, this is, this is freaking awesome for me, man. Because I, like I said, I respect you guys. You guys are the pioneers. You guys made it for what we are today. I mean, I understand some of I understand some of you old school guys don't don't like the way it is now. The GPS is the the electronic laws, the the automatics. I I get that. I get that. But I you know, but if it wasn't for you guys, yeah, I like all that. If, if it wasn't for you guys <laughs> going through the going through the struggles and and going through sleeping bare ass naked in a in a in a front seat the front to back two inches away <laughs> two inches away from each other and going through all that struggle just for you know just for what we have now i i, I appreciate you i i salute you bro i salute you thank you for 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 doing what you're doing and i really do uh I really do appreciate you, man. Throughout your thirty years, man, how how many miles that you that you got up under your belt, and how many companies you you went through to get it? Uh, well, I was with um, Ashley Furniture for eighteen of those thirty years, and I hit. I was a two mil two million mile award uh, earner over there. Uh, but I would say, all in all, out of thirty years, if I had to take a swing at it, I'd say, I would say at least four million miles. Four. At least I say at least four million. million mile driver. 
Are you, I get, you know, the most important thing I didn't ask you, are you a, a company driver or are you an owner operator? And have you ever been an owner operator? If you, if you're a, co a company driver. I, I, I started, I, I was looking into it at one time, but I don't think I have, I don't think I have the right temperament to, um, to do on the operator. I did, I did look into it, you know, pretty heavily, but, uh, I would say if, if, if a person doesn't have a lot, you know, you know, got bills and I'm, I'm paying back school loans for my daughter and, and just got basic bills like everybody else. Um, I would say if you don't have a lot, if you want to try, you know, you want to dip your hands in it, I would, I would encourage people if that's what they really want to do. I would say be, I would say be a lease driver first and kind of learn how to operate, you know, cause you're leasing that truck, mm -hmm. you know, but you still got to take care of it, but you're leasing it. I would say do that. And then, then if you want to go and, you know, get your own, own truck and put it on with another, with another company or you want to go get your own authority. I do have friends. Uh, I have one friend he owns, he used to own three. Now he's got, he's got two. He's got his own authority. He owns two trucks. We got two reaper trailers and he's, you know, he's, he's home every day. You know, he's, he, he's home every day. And he's got one, one driver that he pays a thousand dollars a week. He runs the North Carolina and back. So and he's very successful. He's very he's he's pretty good at it. So I, I you know I take a lot of notes from him. But I'm just I'm, I guess I'm too chicken shit to pull the switch, man. Cause I get a crack windshield, I'm ready to turn the whole damn thing in. I'm like, look, y'all come and get y'all truck. <laughs> well, <laughs> man, y'all come and get y'all truck, chip, man. <laughs> thank you very much for coming on the podcast this evening, man. This this has been a wonderful. Uh, a wonderful journey with you going down memory lane and um and uh 30 years how how, how much how much longer you got uh how, how much longer how much more trucking you got in you man well i i have retirement you know i have 401k and i would i would i would tell anybody this is really important no matter what company you go to Get into their 401k uh, profit sharing. Get in, get into that. Because had I not, had I not, uh, uh, did that, man, you know, I'm, 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 I'll be, uh, 58 okay. in April. And so my, my wife is set up. You know, I got insurance policies. I, I don't mean just insurance that they come to give you. I got a separate insurance policy. So, I mean, if something happened to me, she's taken care of, and she don't have to worry about financial stuff. So um, I tell anybody, make sure, no matter what company you go to, if you make sure they got a 401K or something that you can get into, because I'm telling you that that money will stay with you for the rest of your life. And then you get ready to retire, you decide you want to retire, then – you don't have to worry about just depending on social security check. You know, you got your retirement coming in for the rest of your life. That's what's so. Up. That's that's my advice to to anybody and driving. On that truck. note, I on that note, I luckily for me, the company that I'm with. Uh, next month, I will be starting my 401k. I wish. I, I wish I would have did it back then, but I was up under the, I was up under the pretense of that since I wasn't going to, you know, if I wasn't going to be with this company long or I wanted to see how this company was going to work out, I wasn't going to, you know, jump on a 401k because I wasn't sure if I was going to either be with that company or whatever the case. But then I come to find out, as you just said, it does stay with you from company to company. So this company that uh, th right, you just this roll it, company roll that it I'm over. with, I will be starting it up. 
I am 50 this year. Uh, well, I'll be 51 this year. I'll be 51 this year. I think I got maybe about maybe 10 years of trucking left in me, maybe 15, maybe 20, you know, 70 years old. Who who knows? I, I don't know. But I want to make sure I have that 401k set up so that I can have some money, you know, that – down down the road man chocolate chip man thank you very much for joining me man i really do appreciate it uh right now i'm gonna have to get up out of here this has been a wonderful journey you guys out there if you like content like this or more definitely hit the like subscribe share and hit that bell along with that all button so that you would get content like this i would like to i would like to thank chocolate chip for coming on to the podcast to share his long, illustrious 30-year career in Woo. trucking and to share it with you guys. Chocolate Chip, man, you take it easy. You stay safe out there, man, and get to where get to where you need to be safe and sound, all right? I try, but I can't promise. <laughs> <laughs> and that is and that is what's up, man. That is what's up. You guys, y'all take it easy, and we'll come back with you with another video. Peace out and peace and love. Chocolate Chip, thank you, man. Thank you very much. All right, man. Pleasure's all mine. All right, man. You take it easy, and I'm out. All right.